I'm in Newport and I got coffee in Hardy's Bay. Now that's normally a one and a half hours drive from here. So instead, we're gonna take this Hydrolift X22. Join me, let's find out whether this is actually a $100 coffee. Dan Jones is my name, you're watching Dan's Boat Life. Let's go have some fun. We're being a little bit sneaky here today, guys. Well, not sneaky, more like intelligent. Um, when you've got a strong westerly like we do today, you just drive into it as far as we can. And now, because we've got the right angle, due to where we're going, we can do a hard right and then just run downwind. The boats of this size, you're just gonna make your life a little bit easier and a bit more comfortable because with 25 knots of wind westerly with wind, tide and waves uh, just makes a bit a bit more sense. Something just dropped. That must have been my camera. Ah, uh, cool, phone, no problem. Um, Shane's here with me today. You don't have a microphone on. I said sit next to me today because we got real world rough conditions. So that was a lot of fun. We did 43 and a half knots belting across the pit water. My drone can't keep up with the boat at that speed, so I had to go high, so I hope you'll appreciate some of those shots. Where we are right now, we're just coming around the Lion Island. We've got the mainland to the left, Lion Island to the right, and we're in the protected waters, given that the westerly is behind us. And I'm just gonna run the boat up to a bit of speed here. We're going through um, an exposed part of the water. So we have the ocean to the right, I've got beach, and then I actually have a surf break because uh, we have the, the, the sand comes out for a mile or so here. So I've got to hold this line uh, before we then do a bar crossing and then get into the entrance, which is quite a tidal area, uh, which will take us on our way for coffee at Hardy's Bay. And this is what you do in a boat like this. 225 horsepower on the back, 24 degrees of dead rise and twin step hull, 1,200 uh, kgs uh, is the light weight and about, what do we say, 260 litres of fuel? 270 litres of fuel. Um, so this is just a real good whip. She's very capable of a lot of conditions. We're sitting on 2,900 revs right now and a speed of 27 knots in choppy conditions. I'll, I'll give you the full speed run a little bit later with a, a drone nice and low. So just keep watching for that. Where we're, we're heading now is for the walkthrough. So going into short, sharp waves, you will get a little bit of water up and over the boat, uh, which you're gonna get on basically anything in conditions like this. And I do actually have my safety strop on today because you know this thing will do 43 knots plus easy. And if you're gonna take it out in rough water, that's just a wise decision. In terms of my comfort factor right now, sitting at 27 knots, I can see over the helm, she's quite a high helm, but I feel quite locked in. If I wanted to, the transition's actually pretty easy. Now I've got epic visibility, and I, I do feel quite in control with the wind going still over my head and complete protection from any spray with this uh, with this windscreen. Next thing, you didn't see this on the X26. If you haven't seen the X26, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. We've got the T-top. 
and I'm loving this today. That is such a well-constructed, it's not moving around at all. It probably, well, I think it definitely does lower our top speed because it's gonna have a bit of downforce, but the protection we're getting right now, it just means you're gonna stay out on the water for longer. So doing trips like this, admittedly, this is not a long trip for us, but still, who wants to be out in the sun for 20 minutes when they don't need to? So here we come, we're going, this is the bar crossing, which is not not dangerous whatsoever today. There's no waves. I'm just going to slow my speed down to 25. I'm going to stay on the right-hand side. We've got some boats exiting the bar. We've got rocks on one side, waves on the other. So it does get a little bit technical. Uh, this power boat's not sure what side he wants to go on. There we go. Always make sure you make your intentions real clear, nice and early, guys, because it's particularly in close quarters like this. Um, and now I'm going to slow down. This is a Caribbean 40. Kicking off some wash and over it. So you feel the quality construction of the boat just bashing through some waves, even like that. The thing feels solid. She just feels like a little solid rocket. Now we're entering a four knot zone. So we'll check back in with you, I think, when we get to Hardy's Bay. We made it. Uh, 15 litres of petrol to get here, and we did a lot of zooming around. So that's not uh, consistent straight here. So uh, whether it's a $50 coffee or a $100 coffee, I don't think we're going to get that far uh, just yet. But we've went to the coffee shop over there. We've just pulled in out of the breeze to give you guys a bit of a walkthrough. So that's what we're going to do. So this is a real whip of a boat. Uh, the 22 foot size range is incredibly convenient for doing things like we have just here, pulling into these small community docks, getting a line off the pole and stepping off the bow. We've clearly set it up incorrectly. We've put the boat on an angle so it looks good for you guys. Don't do this uh, if you're pulling up to a community dock yourself. Try and do it a little bit more neater. Uh, than what we have. So starting at the front of the boat and making our way back, there are some unique design features on this Hydra lift. And I just want to explain, this is a high performance boat. So she's a bit of a beast that needs taming. And if you do get into a Hydra lift, you can, or you do get supplied if you buy the R version with some high performance race training. And, and I would advise that you go ahead and do that if you're not used to fast boats. We were cruising at 43 knots in the flat water and doing 27 knots across that rough exposed water. So the closing speed of other boats, particularly if they're at speed, it could be quite high. So you need to adjust your way of thinking, possibly raise your, your um, uh, line of sight a little bit further out onto the horizon and be scanning from left to right a little bit more. Once you get used to it, this is a hell of a lot of fun. And you can come to places like this and hang out for an hour, meet a mate, have a coffee, and then blast home. It's, the world is your oyster. And, and in a 22 foot size range, no marina is going to reject you because they've always got space. You know, if you rock up in a 60 foot day boat, maybe not the case, but in something like this, you can always fit. So, as we saw on the X26, the quality of construction is incredibly high. These are built in Norway. It is very obvious, the, the stainless steel, the gel coat, um, all the fixtures and fittings throughout the boat are at that top level. It's the equal level as what I've experienced on some of the other Scandinavian brands like Nimbus, for example, and Quarken from Sweden uh, and from Finland. I'm gonna put this quality of construction in the same bracket, but we are at that next level of performance. We are at that sort of semi-ridiculous um, and a hell of a lot of fun in the normal range, uh, depending on how you drive it. So we've got the anchor windlass up the front here, but the way it's been designed, it's quite clever. The windlass is out of the way and you have clear walk through to the bow. So stepping off onto a dock like this is very easy. And it's got a weighted lead rope instead of a chain. And so you have this stainless steel anchor, which has been more than enough for a boat of this weight. We're 1,200 kilograms plus motor and fuel. So we're not that heavy. So in most scenarios, you will uh, anchor this boat quite confidently. And you've got the option for a stern anchor. I, I do recommend that because 
this style of boat stepping off onto the sand here is going to be quite easy because you have these one two stairs on both sides you've got this central sun lounge which we'll get to in a second and then you even have a drained little locker here which is perfect for your thongs or your flippers or your goggles or whatever you've been doing on the beach so you can actually you know wash your feet throw your goggles and stuff in here and then step on board so that's quite cool cleat cleat bow rail just here and then we get to this beautiful sun lounge this is a solution to chilling out that i've not seen before so what they've done they've done a centrally mounted sun lounge and storage box and this hinges up and underneath this sun lounge we've actually got the base and then two more cushions to turn this into a whole boat sun lounge so you could get a number of people chilling out like this way you got more than enough space for multiple people to enjoy the sun and then you've got these backrests which install just here there's four of them so you can put them down the back of the boat you can have them up the front but you can actually wrap this whole bow area with these backrests and just chill out and get some sun so that's what we do but i'm just going to open it up so you can have a look inside so they all fit quite neatly the cushions and then you've got the, uh, the the bases is what they're called for the cushion. So you put the bases, the cushions on top, and then you've got storage for more fenders and these back rest cushions just here. And you can even, uh, I think, what's this pole here? That looks like possibly, I'm not sure what that is. We'll cut to a picture. Um, and then forward of a little bulkhead is the anchor windlass that I was just talking about. But the details, once again, are really obvious. So these, gas struts on their stainless steel fittings are super high quality and as you come down these stairs you even have little stainless steel courtesy lights everything is done at the top end so then you get into this part of the boat at the center console it's not a toilet if you're worried about not having a toilet uh, my answer to that is you shouldn't because the thing does 45 knots you're never more than a couple of minutes from land or you pee off the back. But if the ladies are coming out with you, um, a toilet in a center console like this is gonna be pretty restricted anyway. And the speeds we are doing, if you just do a little bit of planning, you don't need to be on the water going fast for more than 15 minutes, because you're gonna get there. So what they're using this area for is safety grab bag storage, extra fender storage, and all your bags storage. So that is, again, very well constructed, and that's quite easy to operate. So. The sun lounge area is complemented by, and I'm actually going to leave my coffee cup there, two drink holders. They're of a decent size, so you can put, you'd be able to put a, a, a tinny with a cooler in that. And then the, uh, the bow rail extends all the way to the center console. So if you were rocking around, you could actually slide your bum on this a little bit, and then you're within reach of this awesome T-top. So we didn't have this on the X26 and it is an option and it's super cool. I would definitely go for this. You lose a, a, a little bit, a couple of knots at the top speed because there's gonna be a bit of downforce and drag quite clearly, but the stainless steel construction is solid as, and I didn't see a single, single bit of movement. And even the way that they've done this stretch material over the top, they've done one consistent leading edge bolt rope into a stainless steel track. The bolt rope, it's not plastic, it's stainless steel welded into the T-top. This thing is designed to go really fast because you think about it, if you're running along at 50 knots and then you turn upwind into 25 knots of breeze, you've got 75 knots over the deck. That's hurricane force. This has been designed to stand up to that. I cannot say the same for many of the fast boats that I test. I'm forever checking cushions, the leading edge of, of uh, material covers all that sort of thing to see if something's going to fly off when I do those high speeds and it's not it's not the normal high speed that the boat's rated to it's when you turn into the wind and you add that extra 20 knots over the decks when things start to go flying but that doesn't happen on this boat so that's really cool so it's also worth pointing out which we have utilized today we've got a standard rubber rub rail the boat's pretty salty we've been through the ocean so you're just going to have to deal with that uh, a whiter hull wouldn't show up the salt as much uh, but this was handy coming in and out with the the timber poles as you would imagine and uh, navigation lights are tucked away just in here so you may not have even noticed those they're just neatly tucked away there and there and then we get back to the helm uh 
race mode is the way you feel when you're back here. This uh, this Perspex windscreen with these side inserts does give you protection from the wind and it also gives you protection from the spray. So you can sit down here and nestle yourself in. The seat is adjustable, it's got height adjustment and it has forward and aft adjustment. And we've also got the flip up bolsters. So I'm at the seated position right now. I'm 5'7", but my line of sight goes across and I can see the anchor. Uh, if you were any shorter than me, you might want to sit on the bolster flipped up or raise the seat up. So you've got those options, uh, but just letting you know that the dash is you know, reasonably substantial for a boat of this size. So that's just something to think about. The driving position is very comfortable. You've got you've plenty of leg room for both pass uh, navigator and driver, and all the controls are at hand. So the throttle uh, is mounted quite in a natural position for a high speed driving position because having the throttle base on this angle allows you to rest your palm on the throttle base and drive with the throttle uh, around your thumb. Now I'd definitely be using the safety strop on this one, that's in a sensible uh, place. And we've got the new, uh, what's new to me, and quite neat Mercury start stop. So now that is a, um, that's a safety feature. So if you forget to put your, your kill switch on and you go for a swim with the engine on, when it detects you out of range, it's gonna automatically shut the motor off. So that's pretty cool. And it does mean that you now also turn the motor on and off using the lanyard which you just leave around your neck. So at the dash here, we've got analog gauges uh, just in front of us. So I've just got revs um, and speed, and then I've got the digital inserts in both of those, which gives me full di digital diagnostics. I've got a small Garmin screen on the middle, and then I have uh, adjustable steering wheel, normal size, leather wrapped. I've got my windlass operation on the port side of the wheel. Uh, and then navigation lights as well. I've got a super cool cup holders which are surrounded in, so it's like a metal construction with a foam insert which perfectly captures your coffee cups and then it's got a phone holder beneath and then another neat little storage area which is gonna be good for other knickknacks, wallets, that sort of thing. And then forward of that, we have our phone charging area and it is drained. So you've got your diagnostics plug in for the mechanics. You've got your, your power plugs for your phones and electrical devices. And then you can close this Perspex cover. So everything's gonna be protected in there. And then anything devices that you're using throughout the day can sit in this little metal holder just here. Now we've also got the remote control uh, for the anchor up and down. So that's handy if you are going forward and just need a visual sight line on that. Zipwake is centrally mounted below the throttle. We had it on auto all day and I'll have a play with it in manual on the way home but I actually felt the auto was quite responsive and useful for the conditions we were tackling today so I left it on. Two speakers right at your feet and I'd say the console is actually going to reverberate some of the bass from those speakers into the center of the boat, so I'd imagine they're gonna work quite well. As I said, the T-top works as a good grab handle. Then, so, then we make it here into the heart of the boat. Both of these seats will turn around and we have a table which can deploy from underneath this L-shaped seat and go in the middle here. So it's a little picnic table. But I reckon you would get six people comfortably around here. If you think about it, we've got a decent amount of space on this back lounge. And the fact that it's got the L shape there would make it comfortable for six people sitting around the small lunch table with your coffee and your nibbles on the table. And we've all got a reasonable amount of protection from the sun. So the trailing edge of the T-top finishes just here. So you can see me right now, I'm in the shade. So any of the hot middle of the day summer sun, you are actually gonna be protected. And I see some takeoff points after that, so I'm wondering whether there's also the option to do a little bit of extra shade at the back, I'm not sure. So underneath this L shape seat, it actually hinges up like that. And we've just got some excellent construction 
once again. So the battery box has got its own cover that hinges up. We have a removable Esky, and then you've got access inside to all the shutoff valves. We've got the control panel, and the table has its own little storage area. Uh, and forward of that, you have two ready access fender holder or fender storage areas, which are just great. So you've got more fenders, which are forward in that sun lounge locker or in the center console locker. But for, for regular daily use, you're probably just gonna use these two and they're right at hand. So whether you're exiting on port or starboard, you can grab them. Now, courtesy lights, but I just want you to pay attention to this. This seat folds up like this and turns into a passageway to the aft deck. That's clever design. Once again, it's all solid aluminium and you can just step on it and walk out onto the transom where we've got our three-step swim ladder on the port side and enough space to walk around to both sides of the motor. And you even have this aft facing seat just here. But I reckon if you wanted to make that a bit more comfortable, I reckon that's why they've done this. So this actually will fold forward like this. And if you had a couple of throw cushions, which you could store in the uh, storage locker up the front, this might be a fun place to hang out like this. So I reckon that's what they're thinking with that, because if you've just got the sun going down and you want to enjoy it in that position, that's probably what's going on. Be beneath this seat here is actually where they would store the uh, stern anchor if you option that but in this case we have some storage and it might be good just for the rubbish at the end of the day or throughout the day. That's probably a good place to store that. In the middle, just here, is where your ski pole would mount. That is stored below in its own little holder. It's a stainless steel ski pole and you would absolutely ski behind this boat. This boat would kick ass at towing a skier. So um, if you're into that sort of water sports, water activities, this would be great for it. So. More courtesy lights. I've got one courtesy light out the back here. There is another one in the center of the boat as well. And the final thing I want to pay uh, particular attention to is these stainless steel grab rails, which wrap from the transom all the way up to the middle of the boat. They're really, really well constructed. They actually have the aft cleats incorporated into their construction and they just look cool. They just look really cool. Fuel in on the port side, almost at the midships level. And I'll just have a look on top of this T-top. Ah, look how smooth that is. So I can see a fitting here where I assume that's where the all round white light, anchor light would, would go. This is a brand new boat. I don't think it's been commissioned. Um, so I assume that's where that would go. And I think I can see a manual bilge pump just underneath us here. So very cool. I think it's time we actually give you guys a full speed run. So we're gonna leave Hardy's Bay now cross the rough water it's blowing 25 knots from the west and then we're going to wind it up in the flat stuff and go flat chat so keep watching let's see what we get okay time for the speed test we're just coming in Got a little bit of protection from the westerly. I gotta say, flying the drone was a challenge today. We got real gusty winds, 25 knots plus. Let's accelerate. Flat ish water, I wouldn't call this real flat. Got some boat wash. Speed's coming up through 35 knots. Engine trim's going up a little bit. A couple more little bumps from boats. Okay, that's foot to the floor. 4,000 revs and climbing, 41, 42, 43, 44, a couple of waves up ahead, so I don't know how long I can hold this, she's got, she just feels lively, 45 knots here, give it a little bit more of a trim up, above, above 45 and a little bit of chime walking there, slow down, trim down, so in optimal conditions, this boat's going to be a 45 to 46 knot boat, and I reckon a lot more if you had no T-top. I can't keep testing this because we've got boats. It's actually Easter Saturday. We've got boats 
all around us and with this wind I'm never going to give you an absolute true representation with the amount of wind chop and traffic we have today but for, definitely from what I've just learned 45 46 knots with the t-top I'm going to call it 50 knots or approaching 50 without the t-top so how good's that guys that's been a full day of action we saved three hours of driving in the car time instead we made our transits back and forth in under an hour we could do it 20 minutes if we wanted to in the right conditions because as you saw mid 40 knots is possible in the right conditions we burnt 30 liters of petrol so think about that 30 liters of fuel for a whole day of fun self-draining decks trailerable twin stepped hull pull a skier this boat is versatile it's well built and it's just a hell of a lot of fun so if you like that you're gonna love the x26 her bigger sister i've already tested that boat so follow the link and check it out coming up on the screen right now